At a VidCon 2017 panel, Anita Sarkeesian singled out Sargon of Akkad, a popular critic of her work, for abuse. You're a garbage human. And Anita is now the one abusing the authors. She then went on to berate fellow panelist Boogie for his positive message of inclusivity. I said in a very upset that I think it was very fucking uncool that you said what you said there at the end knowing that no one else would have enough time to respond. VidCon founder Hank Green apologized to Anita. On Thursday, June 22nd, VidCon hosted a women online panel, which included Anita Sarkeesian. A diverse group of non-feminist YouTubers attended and sat together in the front of the audience to listen to what the panelists had to say. Among them was shitlord extraordinaire Sargon of Akkad. When Anita discovered that Sargon was in the audience, she fem freaked out, went into action, and texted security. The head of security approached shitlord audience member Naomi, Crazy Hair Naomi on Twitter, and explained that Anita had sent security texts claiming the group made her feel unsafe. Anita had actually labeled people she knew disagreed with her sitting together in the audience an act of aggression, and the group was asked to move to the back. When Naomi pointed out that Anita is a professional and it's her job to not react to the people in the crowd when they have said nothing to her, the guards settled on surrounding and watching the shitlord section. Soon after, Anita answered the moderator's question, why do we still need to be having panels like this, by pointing Sargon out to the entire audience. She then went on to use the power of the podium to bully Sargon, who had said nothing to her up to that point. Sargon continued to sit in silence as Anita berated him as a garbage human. She finished by insinuating that his videos are all about her. So essentially, her answer was that panels on women on the internet still need to be held because there are uppity people with dissenting opinions who have not yet bowed to the idea that feminist women should be able to make political statements publicly on the internet without the inconvenience of having their assertions examined and criticized in an equally public manner. This set the tone for about a half hour of shrill, weepy, rising inflection, nasal whining by the whole panel. The underlying theme for the entire talk seemed to be these women's objection to their inability to get and maintain control over the speech of people participating in public discussions they've initiated online by publicly posting potentially controversial opinions. One panelist outright expressed a sense of entitlement to speak publicly without her assertions being challenged publicly. This isn't a conversation, she ranted. You're just here to disrupt. Defining any viewpoint that isn't in agreement with hers as not a counterpoint but an attack. She went on to describe without using the term the echo chamber she creates around her own online activity and how comfortable it is. The only other complaint mentioned was the claim that asking women to do videos on particular topics pigeonholes women into those topics. This complaint was supported with a personal story which clearly demonstrated women's ability to choose not to be pigeonholed by using the power to decline requests. By the power of... No. Authoritarian feminist YouTubers, in other words, want you to watch their videos, but they don't want to know if what they've said elicits any other reaction from you than, Oh my God, like, I know, right? In response to some of the other panelists' statements about banding together against a scourge of dissenters they can't control, Anita made the discussion about herself and her own claims of having been harassed, a story she says she fears will discourage other women from making videos. Like this one? <laughs> well, maybe not. She called herself the poster child for online harassment. During the question and answer session, the panelists alternated between repeating their stated complaints and dodging questions they just couldn't answer without discrediting themselves. One actually suggested that they couldn't talk about things they considered positive because people who disagreed with them were in the audience, and that made it just too intimidating. Asked how important it is to engage with people who genuinely disagree with them and how they define that criticism, they responded essentially by saying that it was important to engage with genuine criticism and then rattled off several ways in which they don't do it or at least avoid interacting directly with holders of dissenting opinions and gave their excuses why. Later, Anita penned a post for her feminist frequency blog labeling the act of sitting quietly in the audience and listening to what the panel had to say gaslighting 
and claimed it was intended to intimidate her specifically and put her on edge. Her admission that her allegation is outrageous is stated as a prediction that those who were there would plead innocent and act shocked at what they characterize as outrageousness. She then used her platform to demonize Sargon and impute malice on all anti-feminists to once again classify opinions which disagree with her narrative as harassment and to criticize YouTubers for drawing an income by vlogging their political opinions the very way she makes her own living. For the record, Anita's entire online career consists of falsely demonizing nerd and geek men, ignoring the women who were nerds and geeks before it was cool, mendaciously disparaging the communities we've built around hobbies and professions we've shaped, wrongfully demanding those hobbies and professions change to suit her feminist sensibilities, and then crying harassment when her defamatory political claims met with disagreement throughout these communities, including hostility from those who apparently dare to take offense at her deliberate mischaracterization of them and their peers. This woman, who between vlogging, public speaking about her claims, and shaking down various businesses for consultation, <clears throat> consultation fees, has made around half a million dollars peddling that trash, has the audacity to criticize profit from political vlogging. She demonstrated an awareness of how she screwed up in calling Sargon a garbage human by coming up with an unoriginal excuse, characterizing the act of publicly disagreeing with her publicly stated opinions as harassment and incitement of mob harassment. She finishes her five-paragraph complaint about not being able to control other people's online responses to her political speech by claiming to be powerful. The only power Anita seems to have discovered is the ability to use false allegations of harassment as a tool of harassment. In other words, the power of whining. Why is everybody always picking on me? Then, on Tuesday, June 27th, another revelation was made by Boogie2988 in a video titled, What Happened at VidCon? I Met Anita Sarkeesian. He pointed out in his video that Anita's tirade against Sargon during the Women Online panel led him to worry that she might respond to anything he said in disagreement with her the same way during the panel they were on together. He mentioned how his anxiety over this fear nearly caused him to cancel his appearance on the panel, then how he was even afraid to cancel because he feared explaining his fears would be perceived as an attack on Anita too. He even admitted he ran all his talking points past multiple people, asking whether they sounded reasonable for fear that anything he planned to say might upset Anita. Then he recounted his experience with her during that panel. He described striving to be courteous while articulating his experiences and his methods for dealing with them and describing the tools available to YouTubers to handle abuse. He pointed out that the other panelists, including Anita, got to make most of their points as well. He then said, I think the only thing that could closely represent an attack on Anita is when she said that she hoped that everybody left the panel angry and bitter and ready to fight, and he had countered by saying that wasn't his perspective. To quote, I try to foster a community that's not angry and doesn't fight. I try to foster a community that celebrates beautiful things instead. He then described his closing statement in which he characterized real-world personal attacks, such as the box of feces he once received as things that can happen to anyone, including, as he said, a privileged white cis male like himself, and said these things are not an identity politics issue, but a human rights issue. He advocated unifying against such behavior. Anita publicly accosted him after the panel for saying that, quote, knowing no one else would have enough time to respond. Rather than knee-jerk reacting like most people would, Boogie actually asked Anita, who had backed off after finally sensing his anxiety, for a chance to explain his point of view. In his video, he described Anita as reasonable during that conversation, but admitted that she expressed the fear that his message of unity was actually intended to be used as an excuse to divide people and take away from some of the things she said during the panel, and she, uh, corrected his perception that he gets hate despite being a white cis male, blaming it instead on his obesity, basically castigating him for not identifying with the victim class she thinks he belongs in. He finished by stating again that he did not view the experience as an attack. 
a benefit of the doubt that would never have been afforded to him by Anita had the roles in their encounter been reversed. It takes a kind heart and a very open mind to describe that experience the way Boogie did after being cussed out, lectured, and accused of malice for the crime of advocating an open civil dialogue. The value of his voice to the gender issues discussion stems in part from that open, intense dedication to maintaining a civil discussion. In light of everything, it's clear that initiatives like VidCon's Women Online panel are designed not to create a dialogue around the bounds of common decency, but to stiff-arm into silence anyone who might criticize feminist online political assertions. This is why the panelists turned their Q&A session into a game of dodge call. Had I been there, I'd likely have been removed from the audience for asking Anita if, as you say, people vlogging criticisms you disagree with regarding your content are your harassers, aren't you also a harasser of game developers for making videos similarly criticizing their game's content? So, Badgers, given the opportunity, what question or questions would you have asked that the panelists probably wouldn't have answered? This is Hannah Wallen, and welcome to the discussion portion of HBR Talk. Today, I'm joined by Aiden Paladin, Allison Tiemann, and the adorable specter of death, Prim Reaper, to discuss train wrecks. I mean, the events that took place at this year's VidCon. So, ladies, to begin, what questions would you have asked the Women Online panel that wouldn't have been answered? Oh, geez. There's so many. <laughs> 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 and by the way, that video was an excellent coverage, though, of um, what exactly happened there and some of the absolute hypocrisy. <laughs> I had not seen that video yet, but that was fantastic. So Thanks. Mm. I was in the panel audience, and I was cogitating on a question before people, or actually it was Mike who said, no, don't, don't. This is, this is not the time and place for you to ask questions, Allison, because you know what happened last time. Um, but... Uh, what what I wanted to ask her was um, what and and I think several other people in the in in the Q and A asked her this as well. But how does she define or how did they define how do they separate criticism from harassment? And they never gave a clear answer as to how they mm. do. Mm -hmm. And if you if you don't have a clear way of of defining what is criticism and what is harassment, you're basically as far as I can tell from their behavior and their actions, they define everything as harassment. In fact. Amazingly enough, it sounds like Anita defined what Boogie said as harassment. And I was there when Boogie was talking, was doing his speech, and you could tell that he was scared, that he had social anxieties that he was uh, trying to overcome during that particular panel. And his speech was, it, it was very positive. It was very much about treating people with respect, treating people excellently, and trying to, to see beyond our disagreements. And to see Anita, to learn that Anita later, well, I'm sorry, Boogie, there's no other way to term to, to describe her behavior. It was abusive. Yes. Accosted yeah. him and then blamed him and imputed malice. And it's not even the, the knee jerk, because people knee jerk get angry all the time. Somebody says something you don't like, you respond with a knee jerk. Oh, fucking hell, why'd you say that? that that's not what I'm talking about when I say that Anita is abusive. I'm talking about the bad faith imputation of malice when she says, you did this speech knowing that or uh, not realizing or whatever that, that we would not be able to respond to it. And this idea that Buki, of all people, of all people right? <laughs> of all people would intentionally silence anyone else and and make it and, and maneuver with his with his evil diabolical manipulativeness maneuver to have the final word so he could could charge up the masses of evil to exclude people it's like this is spooky and that's what i would consider abusive that anita did and she didn't back off of that and another thing i would say to boogie is is there reciprocity here I mean, is does Anita and these people, do they have as much consideration for the feelings of the men who they are co colleagues work with, who are their panelists with, who um, they exchange dialogue on, on the internet with? Do they have as much consideration for their feelings as they're expecting? Yeah, they're expecting. They don't even think that. As they're expecting of theirs. Yeah, they don't even consider it. 
one thing I was also going to bring up, just uh, your your question earlier about what what does she define as harassment? Well, I mean, when she was texting and the, the security came and asked you guys to move to the back, um, like apparently your presence in the back row would have not been harassment as, as your presence in the front row. So apparently her definition of harassment is like three meters or whatever. So there you go. Is that, is that not is that hysterical in the um, sort of what that means in terms of if you look at that in the historical context of move to the back, you <laughs> filthy male. You, oh, how dare you? Being, it's already be, being considered to or compared to uh, the back of the bus. It uh, is. Comparison there. And I, As I think it should be. Kind of accurate. It's quite accurate. She's saying oh. that, that males should not, or, or excuse me, males that are not willing to um, totally worship her. I, I should say, should be forced to the back of the room because you're not allowed to be here because you're subhuman, as far as I'm concerned. Along with everybody who gives males consideration as human beings. Oh, because oh, because she doesn't even consider any of the women of the honey badgers that were there and uh, of the, the uh, base mama and many of the other women who were in that front row, or those front, front two rows, who were there. You're not human. You don't even get you do not even get included in the coverage of this because that is how subhuman she perceives you. And those of them who, who agree with Anita, you don't even get to be included in our coverage because uh, you're, you're that far removed from my perception of what humanity is. Yeah, no, they don't count as women. They, 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 because they advocate for men, they have internalized misogyny, so they're infected with with masculinity. Um, I think it makes you worse than it makes you lower than them, though. Does it not? Well, you, actually, feminists. No, not all feminists do this, but but and I think this actually did. This is one of the things that did come from rad fems. But there sure. is a term for us women who advocate for men. They call us gender traitors. That uh. actually is taken directly from calling people who interact with other ethnicities race traitors race yes. purists from and this is this is more associated with with white race purists but other race purists do the same thing there are purists in every ethnic group Absolutely. say the same thing about people who have relationships with that are interracial that you're a race traitor it's actually a, a they're copying an incredibly racist assertion. Does but that I, not it, make there, it sexist by default? It does, and th it is absolutely identical to the TERFs, to the, the trans exclusionary, the feminists, like who th exclude uh, the trans exclusionary, exclusionary yeah. Oh. Right, trans feminists. Yeah. Uh, uh, we avoid the acronyms because they make them make it really difficult oh. to get. Yeah. Yes, trans exclusionary radical feminists. It is the exact same thing in terms of the women who are, and it's not even like, again, it's the same thing of you're accusing Sargon of being this horrible person, this terrible person. He was just sitting there. <laughs> and it's the same, but she cannot, she and, and her advocates at Polygon cannot even accept the fact that people like Based Mama were in the front row. That there no. were women right there in the front row who were, who were absolutely... Who were doing the exact same thing as Sargon and Chris Reagan and, and Andy Worski, who were just like, we are just going to observe. We I were know. there. We were sitting quietly. That was it. I mean, the exact same thing. We did nothing. <laughs> Go I ahead, Bram. She used the word gaslighting. Like, do you know what that word means? <laughs> <laughs> By these people sitting there, you're, you're, they're going to make you question your sanity. Maybe, like, <laughs> maybe you need to question your sanity the in the first place. Like, maybe we, we don't need to. Does it count as a rest of us question her sanity? <laughs> oh, maybe get some help before I do. more panels. I certainly do as well. Yeah, maybe maybe you do need to question your sanity, actually, hon, because the rest of us certainly are, but we're not. I don't think anyone was forcing that upon her. It was the fact that you could see this because, uh, here, for example, I, I've been going to conventions for, um, fuck, a decade, and I've been giving panels for a decade now. They've been nerd conventions and nerd panels. But I've never been, like, so upset that I saw someone in the front row that I would lose my mind like that. That's absurd. Even if it had, and I've been harassed by people before, but I, I have a semblance of professionalism, I suppose. And as someone who, you know, my major issues with Anita are, are academic more than anything, because I'm also an academic. 
And ooh, hoo, hoo, not only do I have issues with her master's dissertation, but for her to act like she has all of this sort of high ground academically and intellectually, that's very disconcerting to me because I don't think she does. And I think she comes, she's allowed into these positions of places like VidCon, where it's like, why, for example, why was there no panel that held someone like Sargon, who's got Sargon and Shu, who both have a, a enormous, or, or TJ Kirk, who all have large, large subs about skepticism or, or atheism. Why is there no panel about that? I can, I can probably answer that if it's okay for the rest of the oh, panel. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, and just so you know, um, we usually do a little bit of traffic control by having people text their names when they want to talk, so we just know who's next. Um, but uh, I think that it's, you got to look at, when, when I was looking, when I was in VidCon, what I noticed about their audience was that it was majority young women, like a tw hmm. uh, nine to 13. And I think that they were thinking that these young women might not have an interest or they have no interest in showing these young women the alternative side. So when you, mm. when you looked at the creator track, well, actually mostly the community track, because there was three tracks at VidCon, which is a really interesting case study in, in class analysis, because the first track- Oh, I want to do this actual track. research. I want to yeah. actually go in there and do this oh, with it, hard it was, analytical it was, research. <laughs> it, it, was, it was fascinating. The first track, which is on the lowest floor, is the community track, and it was early bird, a uh, hundred bucks. Um, and it was designed, or it was geared towards fans of YouTube channels. The second track was on the second floor, and it was, I believe, 200, $200 for the early bird. And that was designed more for the creators, like the, the, the YouTube stars who are creating mm. the YouTube content. And then the third track on the third floor, and I actually got a pass to the third floor, was the early bird, I think it was 550. And it was designed or targeted specifically at industry professionals. So okay. the people who are dealing with the multi-channel networks or dealing with production or our brands or companies that are interested in looking for an influencer to help them with their brand marketing. And the difference between the audiences and the content was unbelievable. First mm. floor, first floor, it was... 75%, well, 50% social justice e type stuff and 50% makeup. I'm not, not, I'm not kidding you. I don't, and, I, I believe it a hundred percent. And the, I think the logic is, is that young women really like uh, the beauty ideal. They like to compete as, uh, as being beautiful or feeling beautiful. And of course they also like the feeling of being vulnerable, of being vulnerable mm. and valued damsels. So they're going mm. in to compete along these these two different tracks of female value, beauty and vulnerability. And mm. that's why this the, the lower level was geared towards them. It's just interesting the class analysis when you realize the top level, which was industry professionals, and when you got there, you're you're looking at 90% male. All of the 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 um all of the tracks, all of the they were called tracks, these seminars were very much focused on technical um algorithmic like very very how to concrete uh how to structure a video to sell how, best practices for three uh th three uh, 360 video that kind of thing like That's really fascinating stuff. 90 percent male almost no social justice stuff except for two two <laughs> Two seminar, two um, presenters who introduced it into their presentation, assuming that we were all, uh, I don't know, rabidly anti-Trump, or or whatever they they think of their audience. But it was it, on the top, the top level. It was all basically, you know, what do you do? How do you do it? Concrete steps. You this is actually you know, got into practices. the science. This it actually got into, got the, into science. the science. And again, that's it's like, fascinating. Oh wow! So as you go up, as you go up, technically, as you spend more money at VidCon, mm -hmm. you get more insight into the science of creating a YouTube video and you get less social justice. And I'm like, looking at this, I'm like, this means something. <laughs> this means something. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to do another video on what exactly I think that this means. But I just found that fascinating. And I think that's why you had the, the high degree of social justice, why Hank Green of VidCon essentially creates that one floor that's almost entirely social justice and makeup. Because he thinks 
or he wants to think, or this is what he wants to sell because it makes young girls the best audience for him. Like it turns them into the consumer that he wants. Wow. Um, yeah, that's so fascinating. Jesus. And that's, that's actually horrifying in some way to think that YouTube is in a methodology directing young women to fall into these social justice narratives by creating a, an echo chamber, essentially, of you can't escape from this because this is the only narrative that we are not only providing for you, but this is a narrative you must fall into because you're a young woman. Of course, this must be your, your uh, lane, correct? Yeah, and it's it, it, like if they wanted to see patriarchy, like I, I don't really buy into the term patriarchy. Yeah. Well, maybe small p patriarchy, just the recognition that men often occupy positions of overt power and authority. Eh, maybe not for good big, reasons. But yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, not big p patriarchy is they then turn around and use those positions mm -hmm, of power mm -hmm. and authority to benefit men, which I have seen no evidence of. But yes. if you if you believe in small p patriarchy, or if you're you just recognize the the, which could just be a biolog a manifestation of biological differences. The fact that men tend to occupy positions of doing and being out in the front, being in a leadership position. And you look at, you apply that to VidCon. VidCon is a patriarchy. <laughs> and I was just, it's just fucking That's hilarious. Astounding. I don't know. That's I think interesting. I would wow. actually argue that calling that small p patriarchy would be like calling, uh, calling the, 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 Janissary system you've described, small s slaviarchy. Because <laughs> yeah. basically, in all of the positions that to which feminists attribute power, men are beholden to women. They're in positions of responsibility, and women are still their yeah. primary responsibility in those positions. Every single time some issue comes up involving women, it takes precedence over everything. So right. I, like, I we probably ought to do a show we should, on this. No, we should actually. That's that's fascinating because it is something that that needs to be paid more attention to. Is that like yes, even in these situations? Okay, so the men are on the upper echelon of this this system, but I mean, who? When you talk about who forms the basis and who forms the ability for the upper echelon to exist, well, generally speaking. It does seem to be men. Even if the, the lower echelon women who are on this bottom floor, who are all doing their makeup channels and all of that shit, uh, in terms of society in general, men are the ones cleaning the sewers, men are the ones picking up the garbage, that kind of shit, you know? Well, I didn't really want to get into like a really in-depth discussion of, of how do we describe our society. What I was just sure, pointing out sure. was that <laughs> Hank Green has managed to create the very thing that he probably says he, he wants to smash he doesn't um, want to smash it, though. You know that. He, you've yeah, seen the pictures of him with Anita. They're, they're friendies. And, or whatever. I don't know if they're friends. But you, did well, you see that today? His, just look at his reaction to this whole scenario, oh, right? disgusting. It, it's, it's really repulsive because, so, honey, you admitted that she broke the rules of your own convention. Oh, and you said, kind of that's scary. okay. That's okay. Because Carl... The five foot six, a uh, chubby bearded British man is so intimidating that uh, you know. I've actually it's, met it's logical him. for her to be terrified of him. He's a God sweetheart. Damn. Like he's, uh, he he's, looks, he's just so he warm. Is. Well, I mean, a lot of people in this community are like you. Can, you can just tell by the way people act. Like most of them have have a good sense of humor. They're they're reasonably kind. Very few people are like angry that they like to to portray us as. Like I mean, God knows I'm certainly not angry. <laughs> I'm very angry, so I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Um, yeah, I was gonna say I, mean, I, made, I made a video about it. <laughs> but, but, but even then, like you you guys, you're you're clearly not like scary people, right? Like you're very easy to talk to. Boo. Speak for yourself. Ah. Astoundingly, this is an interesting bit, is that I think here here's an interesting thing I think all of you can agree with, is that the whatever you consider yourself politically, us on the the con the hmm. I wouldn't say conservative. I, I'm a I'm a political conservative, but us on the anti-SGW side, we are far more easy to communicate with. We're I'm just saying, as as aggregate, I have seen that everyone on the anti-SJW side are all like, talk to me. Mm -hmm. 
contact me, reach, DM me on Twitter. Let's have a conversation. And it's the, it's the SJWs and it's the, the feminists and it's the, the other people on the, the more leftist, traditionally leftist side who were like, no, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're a terrible person. They don't want to have that conversation. These are the conversations that we need to have though. Speaking of not wanting to have a conversation, I do have an entire list of questions that I would have asked Anita if, if you guys are so inclined to hear them. Yes, definitely. Oh, yes, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> go Getting back go to the topic there. Um, one, specifically relating to like the kinds of things that she talks about involving video games, I like Ooh. games in which I'm playing a character rescuing a damsel in distress. So I would say, what would you say to me if I were to tell you that I don't appreciate you acting like these games are a problem to be rectified? So I would, I would, um, without trying to be too much of a, uh, fuck, I don't know, a usurping bitch. I'm a media psychologist, which means that what I study is video games and, well, my primary area of research is video games and psychology. I've read Anita's dissertation. It's horrible. It is, I would not consider it science in any way. Now, I am somebody who actually studies how women interact with video games. In fact, my doctoral dissertation is on the female body in mm -hmm. video games. Oh, how cool. The, the interesting thing is that women don't give a shit about having a sexualized body, as we find in our data. So it's like, actually, in some, in some, in some instances, having a sexualized body is actually helpful to the way that women feel in terms of their personal ability to, co to compete a game, or to, excuse me, to complete a game's uh, motives, if, if those motives are social. So, like, if the game is a social game, like Second Life, for example, women choose intentionally over and over again, we see, to inhabit a sexualized body because we want to be sexy because women like to be sexy. Yeah. That, as do men. Like, that's normal. That's human interaction. Well, the fact that, that someone like Anita is so ignorant as to how human interaction works is disturbing. Yeah. And that's actually a second question that I was going to bring up. Why do you strip the agency from female characters in the games you critique, critique by assuming that sure. they're not doing what they do intentionally? Yes. Like, she assigns all of this agency to the male characters, like, trying to look up Batman's ass crack, but for some reason, <laughs> all of the women are, are, oh my goodness, oh, they, they must just be doing this because of the male gaze and all of that. Well, she's criticized Bayonetta. Which is the most disgusting thing you can do because Bayonetta was designed by a female designer. Because it was like, this is my, the, the, the woman who created Bayonetta said, this is my, essentially, um, this is my power fantasy. Of like, this is the character that I would want to view myself as. This tall, strong, sexy woman. And like, that's great. But he can't understand that. Or she she's not capable, I don't understand, really. I, all I know is that Whatever she got her degree in was not academically rigorous because as an academic, it makes me laugh. <laughs> Actually, I think um, Anita's area of expertise is marketing, if I understand correctly. And it's not based on a degree. It's it's based on learning from other marketers. So I, I, I don't know if she has a degree. I, I haven't read anything. She has a master's. She, does she? She does. I've read her dissert I've read her master's dissertation, her master's thesis. It is it is formatted incorrectly, which at least from my perspective as as a, oh, wow. a doctoral as a doctoral student, as as a published scholar, is repulsive and, and insulting, personally, that someone would be able to be granted a, a master's degree with that kind of research and now i know the thing is that like when i say shit like this i i'm absolutely opening myself up to be like oh you know someone's going to come after me and find my shit go ahead by the way i absolutely i would welcome someone to try and find my doctoral and master's dissertations because please they're well, real I mean, science you're you wrote them, you want people to read them. <laughs> I oh, we really do, actually, so. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, really I could say the same. The, yeah, yeah, because I mean, with... Go with, ahead, with look, up like, my, like, look up my yeah. master's thesis and read it. Um, <laughs> it's you know, Most people that, that do this do it because they want to. They want people to see them as, as you know, academic minds. They want people to, they, they're interested in the to topics and they want people to discuss them with them. But I think when someone like Anita gets into that same 
area uh, with wait. shoddy work and and actually demonstrates a complete lack of capability it it it's kind of a black mark you know kind of a, a blotch on the uh, the whole of academia it makes it, it look like it's not really that prestigious it's not really that um, much of an achievement if if somebody can do it with that degree of fuckery then it doesn't really mean so much I, she, I can understand no, she being totally insulted you know I, I, yeah realize. I didn't realize so many of you guys were were master's students. I'm going to have to ask you guys for help when I write my thesis eventually. Oh, well, please. I'm not. <laughs> well, no, please, please ask me though. But the, the thing about Anita is, though, I mean, I'm a, I'm a doctoral student, or well, I'm a, a doctoral, um, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the thing is, though, about Anita is that I've read her thesis, and it, it's not good science. And my issue is, is that it's not just her, but there were several other things that happened during Gamergate that really um, served to destroy the reputation, if it ever had any, that social science potentially did have. And Anita is emblematic of destroying the concept of social science uh, as being a valid field of research. So, as a social scientist, fuck you. You fucked my field up. Specifically, you fucked the field of video game research, because that's what I do. I'm a media psychologist, and I am a, I specify in the field of video game studies. Anita okay. Sarkeesian destroyed my field in terms of how it is perceived by the public. She destroyed it. All right, so Prim, uh, speaking of anger, <laughs> um, Prim has one last question. Yeah, and then, and then I'm going to read out the super chats. Okay. So the last question was actually basically a combination of questions, but why do you act like being admired by men is inherently a bad thing? Is being admired by women a similarly bad thing? Is a woman who desires to be admired by a man and dresses in a manner that is likely to get her male admiration a bad thing in your mind? Maybe I would ask this in a bikini. Next question. <laughs> I would pay to see that. Okay, so super oh, chat time. Awesome. All right, so we got a super chat from Bud E, who says, so gave us $25 and said, thanks for all, or for what you all do. You're welcome, Bud E, and thank you for that $25. And then Biggest Mickey says, come to Dallas. And that's a $5 from Biggest Mickey and also a desire for us to appear in Dallas. Well... Maybe one day. I don't know. Jew Gold Gold. All this did was guarantee that VidCon 2018 is going to be the biggest shitlord meetup of the world. Well, unfortunately, um, Yank and Spank, I'm sorry, Hank Green and his brother, um, may actually be cooking up a way of excluding the shitlords on some sort of blacklist. They're trying to basically make us the pariahs. I mean, us, I mean, by that I mean everybody who is not hardcore left-wing, hardcore social justice. We're now the pariahs. That appears to be what they're doing, and that means VidCon's going to die. Let's Most get real. Likely. It's going to be over. <laughs> well, I imagine that industry uh, uh, stream's going to look a lot different once they get rid of the people sure. who are who are actually being uh, pragmatic and serious about the job. Okay, Joey Jojo says, does Anita just have dirt on every group out there? Ridiculous VidCon kiss her ass like that. Um, we don't know what Anita has. I have a suspicion that she's got, because like she ended up with half a million dollars from this. And she mm -hmm. gets, she doesn't just get, you know conventions to listen to her she's had social networking sites listen to her she's had big companies listen to her intel listened to her you know mm -hmm. it's i mean this is not something that happens with someone of her low level of capability and 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 i hate to say this but when i say her area of expertise is marketing i'm really kind mm -hmm. of mocking her because she's she does everybody that that listens to her that agrees with her was going to agree with the things that she has to say no matter who said them, and she hasn't mm. persuaded anybody that disagrees with her to her side. In fact, she pisses people off who disagree with her. So here we have somebody who is irritating, caustic, 
not very good at at handling surprise situations and somehow she's getting all of this attention from all of these big companies and in the same way that Al Sharpton does mm -hmm. and it strikes me that it's not just the narrative somewhere along the line I think she's got some someone with pull behind her oh yes absolutely that's that's my concern is that there's and I know that sounds conspiratorial but there's somebody there and it was who, what the fuck was her ex's name um dang it the guy she Macintosh. used to oh, so, Macintosh. Macintosh yeah Macintosh so before she she dumped Macintosh who by the way she cites in her dissertation speaking of which uh as as oh he went over my research Somebody else has bought her at this point. And I mean, if that sounds conspiratorial, fine. Call me Alex Jones. I really don't care personally. I think Anita is owned by people. And I think that uh, that's why you can see the, these small changes in her shit. She's owned. She's, owned she's and bought promoted. and paid for. Bought and paid for. Yeah. I'm pretty sure her road is bought and paid for. I think that is what's going on. And I, like, I, there's, there's not something I'm going to say, I've got a smoking gun here and that's a fact. It's just, sure. I don't have any alternate explanation for this, uh, honestly. Why someone that incapable would be able to have the career that she has. Because it's all smoke and mirrors. There's nothing to her. Absolutely. She has no arguments, which is the thing that's so disturbing, is that um, she, she can't debate someone, like anybody on this stream right now. She could not debate or talk to any of us because we would all destroy her. Correct. And that's why she doesn't, because she does not have any arguments. She is controlled. She is bought and paid for. Someone, someone is creating this narrative, and, and I don't know who it is, but like the thing is, and you can tell this from the content that she has created, be it from that horrible piece where she included that Hitman video where it's like, oh, Hitman encourages you to murder prostitutes when that is the exact opposite of what that game tells you to do. In fact, where you get discouraged from doing that. To some of her new uh, fucking freak show videos where she apologizes for Islam, um, essentially erasing the lives of women in Muslim countries who are raped and murdered. And she just says, no, nah, let's not cover that. We won't talk about that. She's controlled. She is controlled thought. Mm. Disgusting. Yeah, you're cutting in and out a bit, uh, Alad. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, did, you see, did you see the new video that she made, though, about Islam? Um, no. It's a little bit out of our wheelhouse because we sort of focus on issues between men and women. Um, Good. Well, as you should, but my, my fear is that, like, she does not talk about she made a video about it she basically said though that there's there's no problem with um or excuse me i should say let me be completely accurate that all religions are bad towards women but there's no that islam is not any worse um i think our position Oof. is that islam is bad for both men and women yeah it's pretty much bad I, well as i agree 100 percent, i agree islam is bad for men and women Mm -hmm. This is 100%. something I, I want to point out. We've noticed, as a, as a group, we've noticed going on with feminism and going on with, um, like, like, people aren't seeing it and they're falling for it. People on both mm -hmm. the left and the right are falling for this. Feminists that are adopting Islam as, as a sort of pet religion, and they really are adopting it as a pet religion, that they've sh sort of shoved... Yep. Muslims into a special place in the progressive stack are using demonization of Muslim men's sexuality as a sort of shield to slide no. as a sort of shield to slide Sharia law in under people's radar. Obviously women have to be protected from these evil rapey Muslim men. Look how Muslim women do it. We should adopt that. That is what they are saying. And that is what people are starting to, to accept on both sides of the fence. How disgusting the way that, that, that men are treated in Islam as much as women, though. As yeah, men are treated. Yeah. 
<laughs> as as you you are a, a vessel of war and you have no other fucking value other than your ability to kill yourself holy shit i don't mean to get too much into that sh that kind of topic well, no, we're a little off every, topic yeah, right every, right right in every instance you, you can you can talk about that and that's a, that's a whole other show of, on in and of itself but as far as anita's connection with it is concerned uh, and i haven't seen her video either all i've seen is talk about it but I recommend watching it with the point that I stated in mind. Is she using, here, look at the way Muslim women protect themselves from, from those uh -huh. Muslim men. We should, mm -hmm. we should accept that as valid and start, you know, maybe not, maybe she's not overtly saying we should start doing it, but I will bet you that she's slipped that in there somewhere. Yeah. Look at the way these, because this is something that I noticed with yeah. the women's march. This is something that Allison has pointed out repeatedly. This this idea of the the rapey Muslim man, and I'm not saying that rape doesn't happen in their culture. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna get all kinds of shit for people's. Oh, you, there they are, Islam apologists again, saying Muslim Aww. men don't rape. You know, no. What I'm saying is, this is being used as a selling point. This is the wedge. This is the shield to get Sharia law into countries like the United That's States. That's the fear. That is my that is my absolute terror is that yeah. they're going to use that shit without understanding the complexities of it. Okay, but this is really off topic. It is so a topic. Wait, let's get yeah, back on let's, let get, me, back let's on get back on topic. Let's 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 trot over back to topic. Back um, to the topic in in terms of VidCon. You know, this is exactly the danger of allowing people like Anita Sarkeesian to use false allegations of abuse to shut down dissenting opinions. Here we have a, a narrative that she's promoting that were we in a situation where she had the power that she had at VidCon just mm -hmm. throughout all of society, where, say, free speech, free discussion, open uh, dialogue, had been smashed by the matriarchy. That type of narrative and that type of using women as a shield to sneak in a, a severely authoritarian, draconian type of legal rule would go unchallenged. Sure. Look at the way they were portraying the scenario in a lot of like in the polygon article for example they're like oh yeah they were all holding out cameras and and as if that was harassment in itself and i think the only w reason that they're saying things like that is because you know with with the cameras we can clearly demonstrate that what she has to say is is untrue that she wasn't being harassed in any way and she's the one who lashed out first so the fact that people have that on recording and they can prove that she's full of you know well they're totally changing their narrative the, they, they there's the, the terrifying thing is that they are now changing the entire idea in that you don't have to do anything to someone to harass them you just have to exist you have to exist in their space because that that is that that is the narrative that they're now espousing is it not Basically. that 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 sargon by sitting in the front row was harassing her which is totally at, and and green and all of the people that are involved in vidcon are now saying that's correct yes not only are you harassing her but you're not allowed back next year probably because this is my maybe she'll fuck me. I guess I don't know. I I'm disgusted by that entire narrative. It makes me sick. But she yeah, and I don't think that's right. it. She has the right. Well, to today some five. videos or pictures came out about okay, him guys? with her. Okay, just yeah. take turns because it um they will yeah you sorry will cut out. So Prim, you were you were saying? I, I was saying she has the right to be surrounded only by people who agree with her. And that 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 is her right as a feminist and otherwise she's totally not going to feel safe and if she doesn't feel safe then the world will will explode we will all be in great danger you guys yeah <laughs> um i so i just want to do a shout out to gareth green who gave us tw 32 dollars and says anita's ba was in communication studies her ma was in social and political thought just a for your information and then her Oh God, Hoki Bukisa. Hoki Bukisa says, "Welcome back." And Drum Wild 
says, do you think that VidCon will turn into a NitaCon? What could the implications be? Um, I think that, uh, I think Anita is basically the so spokesperson for Hank Green's, uh, <laughs> Hank, what Hank Green is selling. Because one of the big mm -hmm. things that Hank Green is selling these little girls is uh, victimhood ideology. Yep. And, and Anita, you can't allow criticism of Anita because Anita is, he, she essentially, she essentially is like the guard dog. The guard dog saying, no, you can't question Hank Green's tonic, his, his foot tonic. It really does improve your feet. It really does improve your ability to run. And she's the one who gives all the arguments why that is so. And essentially attacks anyone who says, well, wait a second. I just saw that girl drink Hank Green's foot tonic and immediately her feet <laughs> turned, into, <laughs> turned into something out of, I don't know, 1800s China. You know, just like squished like... um." Uh, I don't know, a cracker. I just saw that. And and Anita will swoop in and say, no, that's actually part of the, uh, the that that's not, it's because it's, it's, it's that, that has nothing to do with the tonic. It has everything to do with this other thing over here, the, the, the community of athletes who run or this other thing or that other thing. And so they can mm. keep selling this. And that's, that's the critical thing. They deflect blame from what they're selling to some other thing so they can continue to sell it, even though what they're selling is creating the problem it says to cure. Uh, create the sickness, sell the cure. That's what they're doing. But the only way that works is if they're capable of deflecting blame onto other parties aside from themselves. And that's what Anita does. And mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a bit of a racket. Um, and of course they allow, no, they allow no criticism of their racket. Why would they? Are there any more uh, super chats? Yes, there are. Anthony Durrell says, why does Anita and co presume always to know about men's lives better than the men themselves? Because well, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's because if men are allowed to talk about their own lives, they're going to contradict Anita's narrative severely. And she can't allow that. Yep. Because men are part of men need to be blamed for this so that the bad actors are never really visible. Mm -hmm. Like if, if we're selling the sickness, if they're selling the sickness, uh, if they're creating the sickness and selling the cure, and actually what they've got is a perfect racket because the cure actually creates the sickness so they just sell more cure, and they need to deflect blame onto someone, then they deflect blame onto men. It's and they can't have men coming up and saying, well, wait a second, what you're describing has nothing to do with my lived experience. Because then men wouldn't be useful as the the object of blame for their racket. So All basically, right. feminism is the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor of social <laughs> sciences. It's uh, basically the same answer uh, that Prim would have gotten for the question that she had asked about that she would wear a bikini to ask. I'm sorry, I couldn't even keep my <laughs> sentence straight. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. You, you were just thinking of the prim kini. Buzz. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so if you guys want to send through super chats, we'll try to get to them and read them out. Um, so I actually wanted to talk, if, if it's okay with you guys, to talk a bit about Boogie's response as well as. Oh yes, hey, please. Yeah, because just to give my thoughts on Boogie's response, I was listening to how he was talking. And and I don't mean to like force my opinion of how who he or how he's experiencing this, but he is taking on a lot of responsibility for her behavior. Um, yes, absolutely. I actually feel really bad because I think that he's 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 sort of internalizing some of Anita's own bullshit. Oh yeah, him. and like and, and I'm I'm of several minds about that. He's internal. He's internalizing what she's taught or, or he's internalizing responsibility for her behavior. And I think maybe partly it's because I think abuse victims want to feel a little bit of control over their, their life. So they want to feel like it's it, that they're, that the things that they experience are actually a result of their actions because then they can yes. control their actions. Actually but from also, a psychological, from a psychological, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you too much, but the psychological effect on that is completely correct in that 
people who are the victims of, of psychological abuse, as Boogie is, as we know, they want to take their abusers, the things that they do, and say, this is my fault. That is completely typical. And to see that Anita abuses him the way that she does, and then he still is being like, yeah, maybe it's my fault in some way, that is, I guarantee, I don't know, no, I don't understand how much Anita knows about psychology. If she knows any of it. Maybe she did that on purpose, of knowing that she could bully Boogie, knowing that he would internalize her bu her bullying. That's I'm, disturbing. I'm going to speak to this from a different perspective, um, not from necessarily per necessarily the perspective of someone who studies psychology, but from someone who in the past has been a, uh, a victim of long-term psychological abuse by a girl, mm -hmm. actually, more than once. Um, Hmm. And one point that I'd make, and I put this in our chat earlier, but one point that I'd make about the boogie situation is that it's it's not this isn't to label him as a victim because the reality is that if he doesn't consider himself one, he's not he's not mm -hmm. experiencing mm -hmm. victim status. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm not taking away his agency by saying this. I'm talking about what we do as human beings when we are in this situation. Um, and it doesn't make what Anita did to him not abusive to say that he's not experiencing victim status because it doesn't change what her intent was mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and still is. And that was to, to bully him into silence so that he would not do the thing she was upset about again. It just shows that, that due to his history that, that he's disclosed in the past of experiencing this type of abuse, he's developed that mixed bag that, that we develop of being able to manage a psychological abuser to a degree and and being more forgiving of one than maybe other people who witnessed her yelling at him are. And this is something that happens when you're a target of repeated long-term psychological abuse. You develop a pattern of accommodating the abuser. And I've talked about mm -hmm. this before. You learn to uh, read their cues and obey them in order to avoid or uh, divert the coming abuse. And you learn to sort of manage their behavior. And if you're smart, and I think Boogie's a pretty damn smart guy, you learn to manipulate the same way they're manipulating. And it's not necessarily healthy, it's not necessarily the best thing, but it does manage the abuser and you sort of see in the way he described the situation what he was able to do was get her to calm down get her to back off of the abuse and get her to agree to try to have a civil conversation with him now in the end they did not come to any kind of a consensus and they weren't going to come to a consensus and that's because Anita's intent never stopped being abusive but it did protect Boogie from the degree of trauma that he would have experienced if he had not learned to manage a psychological abuser. So there's a degree to which that's healthy and there's a degree to which it can be unhealthy and I think Boogie has taken it to a healthy place. He does protect himself at least in the aftermath from the trauma of abuse and I think a lot of his social anxiety comes from it's it's the other end of it he's anticipating that abuse and anticipating having to take those steps and everything um, and and he's anticipating having to shake it off and that's all part of human nature what was good that came out of it there were two good things that came out of it you know the the first one is like I said that he it was was able to spare himself some of the trauma that usually comes from being abused like that the second thing is he gave Anita all of the room she needed to fuck up in and it's pretty clear that she used all of it and I, I just, think that's important too I wanted to add to that um I actually really didn't like seeing what people were saying about Boogie that he's a cock a white knight etc if you look at it from his perspective mm -hmm. dealing with social anxiety issues he didn't uh, and, and how he approaches things he didn't back down he doesn't have to be in the same position that we are looking out at the world in the same no. position because he's not, I, but he, when Anita, him. when Anita said what she said, she, he, he directly contradicted her and mm -hmm. his intent in using, uh, according to his response, his intent in using the cis 
uh, straight, het, whatever, uh, white male thing, was to actually defang their use of it to say, you know, this is not an issue that only faces minorities. This is an issue that faces everyone. Yes. He was trying to be yes. inclusive and he was doing it in his, like he was, he was showing spine in his own way. In, in the way that, that he, was, he was was comfortable for him. And part of the what I didn't like seeing when I saw his videos was the amount of judgment that was being leveled at him for not doing it the way that other people wanted him to do it. And yeah, mm -hmm. he he tried to make it, he but, that, but he seeks out the common ground. That's who he is. Um, Gotta point he, out, that go is pretty much how um, on, on our Shrink for Men website, Dr. Tara Pomatier, says to handle a, a, a uh, narcissistic or a borderline explosion when they when they blow up on you the way boogie handled it was exactly what she says to do and we and, can't uh, mm. you, you see it you see mm. how it worked i mean he wasn't necessarily a rar soldier for the anti-fems or anything but he handled it and he but showed that's fine he showed spine. He showed he showed asserting his point of view. I would just ask him to go a little bit further and ask himself to to at least consider requiring as much consideration for his emotional uh, well being as he is giving Anita. Um, yeah. Just, oh, sorry. Oh no. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, the thing about Boogie is that. Yeah, I was actually really impressed by him, by his ability to stand up to some of the shit that Anita was willing to do to him, because I, I would have expected, I know Boogie's got, so I have extreme social anxiety, I understand where Boogie comes from, and it's one of the reasons why I really appreciated some of the things he said in that panel, and the fact that Anita, who claims to speak for women, would come out and, and attack him over the shit that he said about harassment. That's disgusting. Like, the things that Boogie said, I know they were hard for him, and I know that there are people who are saying, oh, he's, he didn't go hard enough, he didn't do enough. He has social anxiety disorder, as do I. You know what? It's really difficult to do any of that shit, to even be in public in the first place, and you want to... I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot... Anita could say all kinds of shit. She wants to go after somebody like Boogie, who I know has social anxiety disorder, and, and be like, fuck you, I'm going to try to make you feel upset, because I, I, I know that, and we have to accept this, Anita went after him because she knew that she thought she could control him. She knew that she thought she could intimidate and, and corral him. That's disgusting. That's really disturbing. Well, Prim, I mean, you I was, had your name in there too. Did you have something yeah. that you wanted to add? Well, I mean, honestly, I didn't actually see any of the the boogie stuff, so I'm gonna have to check this out afterwards. But just touching on something that you guys had said about people saying that like he should have gone harder or whatever. Um, like, I mean, I've I've actually had people tell me that I should be angrier about my stuff too. But I actually think that having different kinds of voices amongst all the people in our Absolutely. community is really, really important. It is. And, I mean, we all have our different ways that we like to go about doing things, right? And I mean, I think that it's it's great that he kind of sticks to his guns and and does his own thing. Like, he sounds like a really nice person. <laughs> Right, that's my, my thing that made me upset, is that, like, he's so boogie of everybody on YouTube is, like, the most, hey, I'll, I'll deal with any topic you, you, you know, bring up with me. And, and this is the guy, this is the guy that you want to fuck with. The nicest dude on YouTube. Really? Oh, Anita, you're young. You need to to go into the children's room. You need to, to go take the toddler seat because you, you're not allowed. I'm sorry. You fucked up too bad. She needs a timeout. Yeah. Bye. Exactly. All right, Allison, go go for it. Listen, are you with us? Yeah, Allison. Sorry. sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, okay, so we have some more super chats. Mil Mr. Why do you guys do this to me? Felixify. Uh, sent us uh, 200 Nokias, which I don't know what that is, but thank you, Mr. 200 Felixify. phones. That's, no, that's 200 uh, Nokia phones. Norwegian crones. They're worth about 12 cents each. 
Okay, and Gareth Green sends us another $10 and says, how can we fight Anita and her masters? Can we get Cassie J to come to VidCon next year? I think that would sort of be slumming for Cassie J, to be honest. Um, yeah, Cassie's VidCon. too good, probably, for it, honestly. That's for shitlords like us, like bottom of the barrel <laughs> shitlords. Like, not, not you, uh, not you, uh, 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 but us, oh, Aiden's you know, like, no, Aiden's a shitlord too, and and I'm uh, a complete piece of shit. Yeah, she is. I I loved I loved I want to get real deep down into the absolute and, garbage know, of humanity, <laughs> like like to be real down in there with um Carl Carl Benjamin, like the real garbage humans. Yeah, and That's uh, the, lower uh, uh, <laughs> the lower colon, the lower colon of humanity. But I mean, if by next year Cassie J has embraced full shitlordery and she's basically shit posting on Twitter and like wrecking people in YouTube comments with her uh, blunts and her sideways ownage caps, then yes, maybe she would want to come. I don't see that in Cassie's future, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, which no, comes down from are... hovering above us and. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, not that I she... love Cassie. She's great. So yeah, if you want to come really down sweet. here. She's really sweet. Okay, so Firespawn01 says, do you think that it's likely that at some point we'll see Anita's brand of feminism marching through cities with burning torches and banners flying high? I, don't, I think it's more Not insidious anymore. than that. Um, we're, we're kind of already think... seeing that, actually. Yeah. Uh, every time you see a group riot and throw rocks through windows and burn things, I mean, that's basically what Antifa is. Yes. However, I would say that that is quickly becoming unpopular. Well, it's now, obviously you, the trash cans that they have been attacking are are, are getting so fed up, and they're going to start rising up against the the evil <laughs> Antifa attackers. <laughs> I'm going to deal with those poor trash cans. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, here's the interesting thing, though, is that um, at least in the United States, I can't speak for other countries, of course, but at least in the United States. People are getting really fucking tired of this. That's why Trump is president right now. Now, you can feel however you'd like to feel about Trump. I'm a conservative uh, libertarian, so I was all on board the Trump train. And you can shit talk me all you like for that. By the way, I don't care. I Actually, I would encourage it. Please talk shit about me because I enjoy the hatred. But um, the thing is, like, this is not going to change if... The, the liberals who are doing this stuff, I hate to even call them liberals because I used to consider myself a liberal. This is not what we're seeing now, right? Um, in terms of just being like, we hate everybody, we're just going to, to shit post about everyone, we're just going to, to you know, complain about every, absolutely everything. Um, if that continues, yes, you're going to see a conservative uh, switch in society. Everything is going to become conservative. Now, that does tend to happen in terms of human society, at least in terms of the United States over the last, oh, gee, 300 years, which is between conservatism and uh, more liberalism. And if you look more further, it kind of happened towards all societies back and forth. Hmm. That's just, those are open questions. I'm not going to give any specific I think it's already happening. Um, I think that it's the this marching of feminism. They've already marched through the institutions. They've already marched through government. They've already marched through VidCon because selling little girls victimhood makes money. It turns them How into perfect sad. consumers. How yeah, it is sad. fucking sad. And their torches and their are the ability to use false allegations of harassment and abuse as a tool of harassment and abuse. There are I think other it's going to change, though. I and think it's going to change. Uh, maybe. But their other torch is doing things like making anonymous threats against venues mm. that host their opponents. And that has happened numerous times, including to mm. um, GG in DC, which had bomb threats. So, you know, this is something that, yeah, it's, it's going on already. And I just want to uh, give a counterpoint to what Aiden said that perhaps is is uh, contradictory. I don't think that um, conservatives are really going to be able to to oppose this. What's happening here, at least uh, as they mm. are like this this conservative what we see as conservative today, um, because they still have this attitude that that men are a danger to women, and a lot of conservatives like a lot. I see a lot of so called conservatives who believe that there is a class warfare between men and women, that men and women don't come together to create a society. There's actually a class warfare between men and women with men winning. 
And as long as you believe that, I don't think you can oppose granting women these powers in order to control the men in their lives if you see the men in their lives as the enemy, as the enemy of not just them, but also the state. And I <laughs> For accuracy there, you kind of got to divide trad cons and authoritarian conservatives versus libertarian conservatives. And well, like, there's a very stark difference there because trad cons don't see men as a threat to women. They see a small segment of, of disturbed men in the population as being a threat to women. And they don't understand that there is also a small uh, segment of disturbed women that are a threat to men. Uh, and what, what they see that is, I think, dysfunctional they consider men stewards of women's welfare, and they, they consider women morally superior to men, and that's problematic uh, because oh, women sure are not is. morally superior. The, the pedestal is a very dangerous place for everyone else to stand around while a woman is on top of it, and because uh, the minute that oh, she geez. falls, she is going to land on somebody hard and, and painfully for that person or those people. Um, and then at the other end of it, of course... God, that's why I love you guys, you gals, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the other end of this it, is course, completely correct. <laughs> men being stewards of women's welfare takes away from men being stewards of their own welfare and women being stewards of their own welfare, which is dangerous to everybody as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Where authoritarian conservatives do have that use of female victim status as a means to control society. All authoritarians, regardless of their ideology, all authoritarians yes. use now, that. Yes. Now, I, I have some fears about, now, I'll, I'll tell you guys, I don't know how much longer we're going to do this, but I'll tell you guys this, this shit real quick, is that I have a little bit of fears is that there are some issues about women's um, behavior and psychology that give me mm, pause to believe that women should have uh, the same rights to the um, Ooh, shoot. How do I say this without being sexist? To, to the franchise that men should have. Now, I, I do believe in women's rights completely, but um, we, we've found some very negative aspects, as we, we've seen historically throughout uh, women's rights in, in uh, Rome, for example, that have had some negative responses. Now, I believe in women's rights, but it, some of this shit that's gone, like, completely insane, like the kind of shit that, that uh, Anita Sarkeesian would advocate for, that makes me concerned. That, um, you know, well, I would say the, the problem is the lack of accountability. Yes, men having it. that franchise, men earned that franchise through their accountability. Yes. Thank you. And they Thank demonstrated yes. their right to that franchise through their accountability. And I'm not talking about the draft here. I am talking about the overall position men occupy in society. Thank you. I was a little worried. I was. I was gonna. I was talking, and I was gonna it's be not sexist. It. No, <laughs> it's not. It's I don't think it is. It's correct. Yeah. No, that women need to grow up and adopt that same degree of accountability. And it's hard. It's hard as hell for men oh, how hard to live it? that. And how it's hard, hard as hell it? for women to live that. And it's even harder right now for women to do that because we don't have the social standard behind us saying, exactly. well, you've got to do this. We don't have something You're kicking told, our butts. You just, get it, every, you, know? you just get everything. You just get everything because of your fucking gender. You get everything handed to you. Now, men are expected to, to be held to these extremely high standards. That's extreme bullshit. I don't agree with that at all. And it makes me very upset. It's why, like, well, it's well, why I am where yeah. I am, correct? <laughs> and that's that's where that's what we saw at this event. Here, we yes. look at what Anita did specifically to Sargon. Was she put on display the stark divide in accountability standards between men and women? Yeah. Yes. If you had reversed the gender, absolutely, there is no way that what happened would have happened. Like, if if, if it was uh, Alan. Sarkeesian and it was uh, Carla Benjamin. Uh, there's no way that the VidCon staff would allow Alex Sarkeesian to stand there and call Carla a garbage human being and a shithead from yes. the podium that he occupied as a speaker. I mean, just imagine that in your mind. That would not fly. It would so never have definite, happened. Definite double standard. And Whatever, dude. <laughs> Justice, what? What? 
Do you, you disagree, uh, Doge? No, I was just. There are fucking I was, male speaking I was, up right now. Wow, no, you're not allowed to talk in here. I was just this playing is a female only space. No, I, I was just playing the role of Alex Sarkeesian. I was just is there adding a in a snack in this clan bake. A, adding in a whatever dude. <laughs> yes, there is. No, okay, so, no step on snack. Okay, so I, but I, I take your meaning with the, uh, the 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 lack of accountability and responsibility. Um, Anita wasn't held to the same standard a man would have been in exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Stewarding her power. And that's exactly the problem that I think you're talking about, Aiden. It's the fact that women are not held to that accountability of stewarding their power. And the, the, the idea of responsibility and earning merit starts with identity. Women get their female identity by virtue of birth, whereas men have to earn it through service to others. Be a real yes. man. Man up. Etc. 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 There is no such concept. Is there any such con concept as be a real woman? Apparently, that's to be fat. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, fuck me. I guess yeah. I gotta gain like a hundred pounds. Jesus. Well, it's not, about, <laughs> it's not about your actions. It's about well, I guess maybe eating is an action, but it's it's about people's <laughs> actions towards you. It's about saying, well, you're not a real woman unless uh, you don't buy in. I, I don't know. It's it it, it the the whole. I, I, Sorry, go ahead, Prim. <laughs> I was just going to say, I wonder what would have happened if Anita Sarkeesian challenged Carla Benjamin. Then who would have who would have been the one? Maybe it would have been. Uh, maybe it would have depended on who had the the louder voice or something. I don't know. I, it would have depended then, on who she, who adopted the victimhood identity. She yeah, couldn't artist. even also, accept or acknowledge that there were women in the audience. I was going to say it would have it would have depended on whose ideology was more accepted in that environment. Um, I want to really point disgusting. out to the topic that we're speaking to, uh, and this is, this is something that I've been saying on, on Twitter quite a bit, uh, because the, the question of the 19th Amendment keeps coming up. And I, I want to point out, there were two suffrage movements. There was the suffrage movement that had men and women in it that was a genderless movement that was moving for everybody's right to vote. And there was the suffragette movement that wanted the privileged, wealthy, upper class, white women's right to vote and nobody else's. Okay. And that one won. And that is why we yes. are in this situation. It is not that giving the women the vote is bad. It is that the women with the least amount of personal accountability are the ones who won it for women. And I don't think that the franchise going away is going to happen. The 19th Amendment's not going anywhere. It shouldn't go anywhere. We are in the water already. Women need to fucking start swimming and stop whining. It's, it's upsetting because, yes, I, I, I absolutely, uh, I mean, as a woman, I, I very much question the concept of whether or not, whether or not we should have the franchise because it's like, oh, geez, we really fucked this up, have we not? Um, fuck. Yeah, but, but fucking it, something up much. is the first stage to learning. And the thing yeah, is, it, it is very much like saying, maybe we can fix it. Maybe we can fix it. It's very much like saying, gosh, should we have a pool here after you're in the water, after you're already in the deep end? It's too late. We're in the deep end. Sink right. or swim. So yeah, and the other women, thing is that it puts responsibility up. back on men when yeah. women really need to take responsibility and live up to responsibility. Um, we put this responsibility on ourselves and we have not up until this point been willing to accept or take or take that responsibility. And that is upsetting because a lot of the problems that we see in society right now are, are because women have been given the franchise but been unwilling to accept the responsibility that comes in, in part and parcel of that. Clean your yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna to, take to, next to, to cite to cite yeah. Yeah. But I think we're gonna yeah, I think we're gonna go through the the rest of the super chats, and I yes. think that's gonna be the end of the no, show. No, 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 don't say no? end, don't say no, end. On, okay, all right. Okay, we're 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 good. We'll we will take the next super chats. Okay, Anthony Durrell, how many women are outraged that Anita is making them all complicit in her terrible behavior? Now you are all to get get dragooned into shielding Anita. Um, the, I think most of us. Most of us are pretty pissed. Yeah, everyone's angry. No one likes it. Yeah, it's uh, it's, I, I I don't personally want to be used as uh, uh, she speaks for all women. No, you don't. You don't speak for all women. And a lot of us are not just concerned about how what you talk about hurts men, but also 
how what you talk about perpetuates the very problem you say mm -hmm. that you're against. Because yeah, teaching young girls to view themselves entirely by how they're acted upon and not in terms of their actions, saying to young girls that your experience in the world is based on how you are acted upon by outside factors that you do not control, yes. not your own actions, that is toxic as fuck. It hurts girls and you need to stop doing it. You oh, know, and absolutely. Even if, we were, even if we were not worried about all of that, which we are, um, but even if we were not worried about all of that, what Anita's uh, actions basically does to women, what, what Anita's behavior and, and feminism in general basically does to women is it treats us like whores. We are Just considered their proxy victims that they can whore out for political power and financial gain and they trot us out when it's convenient and they smash us and step on us if we object. Yes. So clearly this Holy is shit. a pimp whore relationship mm -hmm. with with a a segment of the population that is unwilling to be in it. Now when it's done for sex, when there's sex involved, they call it human trafficking. But when they're just speaking over us and making political statements and advocating for discriminatory law and policy in our names, they don't. I think they should. No shit. That's, okay. that's astounding. That's a really, really good allegory. Okay, SC God says, do you think Anita's narcissistic perspective and muddled representation for women and refusing to converse with those who criticize her methods will result in her downfall if she doesn't change now? Um, I hope that I, I, having looked at her, having listened to her, I think that she's just going to double down and double down and double down. I don't think that she's going to have a lacy green moment. Um, so I think that it will uh, result in her downfall. I take no pleasure in that. I just, it just seems to be the, uh, the, mm. the trajectory that she's, and she's going to take the people who have defended her unless it gets a hell of a lot worse. Cause the alternative is that this becomes a draconian to totalitarian state based on this, this mythology of female victimhood that they've constructed. So they're going to explain why due process has to be destroyed. Free speech has to be destroyed. Um, they're going to explain like why there needs to be curfews, why all, all of these actions that they don't agree with need to be removed and people won't be able to do them anymore. And that's essentially a totalitarian state. And they're going to use the justification to create that kind of totalitarianism. They're going to use female victimhood. So either she's going to be discredited or we as a species are going to enter the, the, uh, the, the, the slide into hell. Uh, again. So, again, because again, this has happened throughout history over and over and over again. Now I'm, I'm going to make the Al Sharpton comparison again, the antidote to Anita Sarkeesian and to all of feminism, to all areas of feminism that do what Anita is doing, is women standing up and saying, no, fuck you, you don't stand for us. This is not our story. You are not telling our story. You don't represent us. You don't own us. And we do not agree with what you're saying. You don't speak for us. And this is what we do believe. And then state it. And that's mm -hmm. going to have to happen over and over and over again. It's going to have to be loud. It's going to have to be widespread. Mm. I think, and it's the Anita, only way to fix it. I think mm. that Anita gets paid too much for what she does in order to stop it. I don't think there's there's going to come a time when she stops. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think Anita's going to stop voluntarily. I don't think any of them are going to stop voluntarily. That's okay, why I say mm -hmm. women need to stand up. Gareth Green, what do you say to property land ownership qualifications for voting regardless of race or gender? Um, I think that that's probably a little off topic to what we're talking about tonight. Uh, I think that, uh, you know what, I don't think that's necessarily the, the problem. Um, there are some practices in the way that we structure our society that I think we need to get rid of in order to return to a truly democratic system. But that's another <laughs> that's another entire show. So I'm going to point out one thing on this, though. I know several men who do not own property because right now their government is taking every dime they can get from them, every dime they can squeeze out of them on behalf of an ex-wife.
who broke up their family voluntarily. So here you, you, you make a suggestion that would disenfranchise people who are being abused by government authority. That's part of the reason that the United States formed was to stop that. And, mm -hmm. and the idea of limiting the franchise to property owners would take us back to that situation where if the government abuses you in a way that has financial impact on your life and, and has an impact on your ability to meet that qualification, uh, then, then you lose the ability to use your vote to fight against that abuse. So that that's I understand where you're going with that because I I know you're you're going for an accountability thing like I was talking about before, but it doesn't quite work that way. Okay, we got to get into Gareth Green's other question, which is more topical. Just picture this: Cassidy J is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Lacey Green is Willow. March into VidCon and slay Anita together. Uh. Oh God, I would pay to see that. That's a beautiful image, Gareth. That's a beautiful image. It's a beautiful image. And let's, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a really great image to just. Okay. Is that, is that our last chat? Is that yeah, our that's, last? That's okay. our last super chat. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But before I do, um, I just want to say thank you, Prim. And thank you, Aiden, for coming on. Uh, in particular, Aiden, because you are doing this from like, a completely <laughs> MacGyvered setup on a phone somewhere out out of town, and uh, you know. I'm trying so... my best, motherfuckers. Well, sorry <laughs> about how bad my audio is. I really apologize. No, it's not. It's it's it wasn't too bad. Uh, it is what it is. But I see we get no yeah. thanks, Brian. No thanks. No, I I wasn't finished yet. I oh, I see. Started with the guests, yeah. though. Yeah. Wow, dude. Of course. So whatever, dude. Um. So. <laughs> I don't know if you know that that's like the newest way to wreck people. You just say whatever, dude, and it's over. My or you just whatever, dude. Quietly. Whatever, you just, dude. You garbage you find, human. <laughs> you, you find where they're speaking and you sit quietly. Yeah. Let's move on to the Sitting next, next question. Sitting quietly yeah, is the worst. It's uh, really the worst thing you can do is, to someone. Just just sit there quietly and listen. <laughs> but also... <laughs> but not agree in your own head. Right. You know, that's, but, uh, that's, that, that, is, that is shit lottery right there. That is the ultimate <laughs> shit lottery and harassment. Just sitting quietly in front of somebody and, and just, not agreeing with them. And, yeah. Or Man, at least I love harassing. getting real aggressive and aggressively sitting quietly in front of someone I don't agree with. <laughs> but you can only do that, that that's as the way a, you, do it. you have to be a man while you're doing it though otherwise it doesn't count you did you just assume my gender oh did you just assume my gender <laughs> oh my god see that's what really <laughs> happened anita figured out that we're all attack helicopters and she got scared <laughs> <laughs> all right that'll do it okay so uh, lastly of course uh alice and hannah the regular badgers uh thanks and I just wanted to throw a comment in there. We do we do have like a lot of extra subs. So some of you guys that are watching are people that I'm not familiar with. Um, you might be some of our new people. If you are, welcome to Honey Badger Radio. But you may find that uh, our content should be fun for you, but it will be deeper than what you may be accustomed to. But please stick around because it's totally useful stuff, I promise. And oh, I Jesus. think that with that said, what? Do you think that wasn't... Did I fuck it yeah, up? Yeah, stick around if you aren't a fucking lily-livered... Yeah. Well, I don't think... I yeah, think they can handle it. I think they can handle it. I think they can handle everything we not, throw at them. You're not pussies. You guys can handle it. So, we're going to go ahead and close this out. Thanks again. We're heading off to the after show, which is for patrons only. If you want to be a part of the after show, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honey badger radio there we're going to continue our discussion of our experiences at vidcon and at the icmi 2017 in australia so international conference on men's issues yeah, for those of you who don't know uh and that's it so we'll see you next